What's up everybody? I'm pretty excited about this one today. Um, I'm not affiliated with this company, so this is just my honest feedback. Uh, what I have here is a Boost Smart Can Expansion Module. Um, this is made by a company called Smart Swap. Um, this is a, a little unit that's for people that are like me that have all my IOs uh, used up. This is definitely for somebody that uh, has pretty extensive knowledge with the Holly Terminator ECU. Uh, connects here using a CAN connector that uh, was an additional harness that I purchased. Uh, there's also an I.O. plug, uh, which I'll be plugging in in a second here. Installation super easy. Uh, basically what this does is it creates additional I.O.s uh, as well as a flex fuel input uh, and a couple other wires that are useful like a 5 volt reference or a 12 volt reference for sensors. Um, you could buy the kit with just the uh, board. Um, I chose to get the two pigtail harnesses. Definitely makes life easier. And to be honest, I don't know if you could replicate it without uh, it costing more. So in this video, I'm going to install it. I'm going to move my flex fuel sensor from the J1 to the CAN input, and then we'll test it. Before we get too far here, um, I guess just some background. Here's my Terminator tune. You can see uh, right here is my input tab completely full, my output tab also completely full. Um, what I'm gonna do as a test is I wanna try to move this flex fuel input away from my uh, J1 connector and move it to this harness here. Uh, so basically this is creating CAN channels. Um, in the actual setup, you can see there's one of them here that's called flex sensor signal. Um, so that's gonna be an easy one to try with. So uh, assuming this works, we're going to get the channel freed up off of the uh, J1 connector and move to a CAN signal here. One requirement to use this is to have version V2 firmware on your Holly ECU. I have videos that I made previously on walking through how to do it. Um, if you have an older unit, this is probably something you'll need to do. If it's a newer one, you must verify before you start. First thing that you got to do is uh, wire it in. I bought this, uh, I guess, power harness when I ordered the kit which gives you an inline splice to your CAN connector. In my car, uh, I got one of them tucked away here underneath the uh, glove box. So first thing I do is disconnect that, put this in line, and then uh, we'll check back in. All right, so now that's done, you can see here's the original connection uh, with the one side, here's the other side, and then obviously this is that new harness. Um, I'll tuck away the wiring and make it all pretty, but. Um, it runs down here to this bottom piece now, which will plug into the actual module itself. All right, so a little better view. Um, this is actually the uh, cable to my three and a half inch screen, which you'll see over there. Um, so obviously that'll get tucked away. Other side now, this is the power harness, which is plugged in. Um, really easy to install. So obviously I have the CAN power harness on the right. Um, on the left, this is an optional part, but they sell a uh, I.O. harness. I think it's like 15 bucks or something. Highly recommend it um, just for the sake of saving time for uh, terminating and stripping and getting all these wires. It's definitely worth it. Um, I have the flex fuel sensor uh, wire out uh, from the loom because obviously that's what we're working with right here. Uh, left everything else tucked away real nicely. So uh, we're going to disconnect it from the uh, J1 connection, hook it up to this CAN module, and then get behind the laptop here. All right, so real quickly, just so we could show, this was the J1 connection. Um, I cut it purposely just so you could kind of visualize it. So I have a uh, current performance uh, flex fuel pigtail on here. Uh, it's a really nice piece that they sell. I'll put a link in the uh, description. Basically plugs in the flex fuel sensor. Uh, plugs in your Holly uh, setup and then leaves you just your output wire. So um, this is where it was on the J1. Again, I'm just doing this for the visual. Um, and then I have it just loosely connected to that wire on the new harness here. Um, again, this is just for testing. We'll clean up the wires later. Uh, but again, this is that one wire labeled flex. So one thing I wanted to go over real quick uh, before we get too far into the wiring side here. Um, if you look at the top, that is the original flex fuel wiring. Um, obviously, there's many ways that people would accomplish this, but essentially what you need to note is that on your flex fuel sensor, you're going to have a 12 volt input source, a ground, and then your V out, which is your signal wire. Um, in order for it to work correctly with your Holly ECU, 
Um, you need to have a five volt reference uh, wire with a resistor in line as this is a frequency output. Uh, so this is the old wiring that I have with the pull-up resistor. Um, in order to do the new setup with the Boostmart, you actually get rid of that whole pull-up resistor section. So the nice thing with the Boostmart is there is um, obviously the flex field channel, uh, which is labeled uh, connector number two. And then you have actually a uh, 12 volt reference wire for uh, your sensor there. So the one perk, if you can kind of see here, obviously the wiring is quite simplified. Um, all you need to do is have the signal directly to the Boostmart module as it's got a pull-up resistor built in. Um, one thing for you guys to note, if you do currently have a flex field sensor uh, wired up on your car, you do need to omit this uh, pull-up resistor circuit uh, in order for it to work correctly. All right, so we're gonna key on here, um, connect the computer. Holly's booting up here, going to the laptop. All right, so uh, since we're doing some external wiring, obviously your config file should remain the same, so this is normal. Uh, now we need to go and configure our inputs and switch it over in the All right, so to keep things short, um, I've gone to my input tab. Um, this is where we're gonna be doing our configuration. Um, so I still have my original flex fuel input, which is on the top here on the J1-A4. Uh, We're gonna be getting rid of that. Um, I entered here this new flex can. Um, I changed the name, just that way I could distinguish the old to the new. Uh, from the drop down, you're gonna select can digital speed slash frequency. Um, we're gonna enable it, and then you're gonna have to configure it. So again, I have this pre-filled out just to save on time, uh, but this is gonna be obviously a GM flex fuel because uh, that's what we're reading. Um, you may wanna do some configurations on here. Um, I left everything kind of uh, standard. Um, I did increase my pulses on the bottom left here. It's optional, but uh, it seems to smooth out the readings a little bit. Um, if you look in the actual uh, user manual, there's CAN settings that need to be configured. So obviously CAN device, you're gonna select CAN IO module. Uh, based on the table in the uh, instruction manual, we know it's input two, CAN bus one. And then these are important. You need to make sure that your CAN ID is 42 and your broadcast weight is one Hertz. Again, these settings are all in the instruction manual. So make sure if you're setting something up that it is following these. So once you have everything set up, um, I'm gonna head back here Obviously, at the moment, uh, there's redundant, so you have your original uh, flex fuel input, and then you have this flex can. Um, if you don't know where things are connected, uh, I've hit where used. This will tell you specifically where your stuff is. So you're gonna need to go to whatever tables that are configured for your specific. So for me, we're gonna verify. Uh, we're gonna switch over to our 1D tables. There's obviously multiple ways to go to it. Um, I have a flex fuel multiplier table. You can see uh, I've already updated this X axis. Uh, originally, I was under flex fuel input, but we're gonna switch it to flex can. Uh, we're also gonna switch over. Um, I have uh, timing offset, which again, originally was under flex fuel input, and we're gonna do the flex can. Um, I was doing some testing on here, so I do have just a, a, a dummy reading here, uh, which has got the original flex fuel input. Uh, for simplicity, I'm just going to disable this table, and then we're going to go back to our IOs, and then now I can officially disconnect this J1 connection. So again, we're using this CAN IO, uh, so let's uh, connect to the car, uh, and let's see I'm what I'm going to do reads. before we start the car. I'm going to go into my uh, signal list, and I'm going to go through here and look for flex CAN. You can see that here, I'm just gonna drag it over to uh, a view. So we have view 11. Uh, by doing this, when I start the car, I'll be able to monitor that uh, parameter. Um, I also have a Holly seven inch dash, which should be able to pull that value, uh, which I could do as well. All right, so I'm out in the car, uh, we're keyed on. We're gonna do a link here. Obviously you gotta do your, your updates. So send the EC. Do your key cycle. All right, so you can see the car is running here. 
Um, on the bottom left, you can see that uh, input that we just put as a view, uh, we're reading about 85%, which is what the test tube tested. So everything's working real good here. So I can't stress this enough. Read the table of contents. Uh, there's a lot of good information here. Uh, there's specifics on wiring, some of the optional stuff that I might not have bought. Um, there also is uh, a lot of the uh, important stuff as far as like your pinning of your connector. This table down here is very important because it shows specifically what sensors uh, can get connected to which wires. Also, you notice uh, towards the middle, there's a 12 volt reference for uh, flex fuel. Um, I was told that this has got an internal fuse in it. There's also a five volt reference wire. So depending on uh, what sensors you're using, if you need five volts, um, obviously you can use that there. Uh, overall, I'm excited to use this. Uh, I very quickly maxed out all my IOs uh, with my turbo setup using flex fuel and boost control and trans brake and all the other stuff on there. And uh, I want to have more data. So uh, we'll see what else I can do with this. Um, as a bonus, I'm gonna uh, show you guys how to hook up uh, a gauge on your dash to read the can channel and display your ethanol content. All right, so adding a gauge is easy. Like always, you're gonna go to customize, hit okay, tap on the screen anywhere, hit add, gauge, and then here you're gonna look for your signal. So we're looking for flex can, should be towards the bottom here. All right, so once that's selected, I wanna do a digital gauge, move it where you're uh, looking to have it. So once you drag it to where you want it, you're going to hit save on the top right corner and you can see now it's displaying the reading that we saw on the laptop. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. If you have any questions or comments, uh, make sure to ask in the comment section. Uh, if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe and uh, give the video a like. Thanks.